Oh, oh. hi there. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Apple Vlogs. I'm Steven and my tour guide for the day is... Me, Ra. So today we are at Little India. And right now we're actually standing in front of one of the oldest temples in Singapore, Sri Virama Kaliaman Temple. It's so shiny and beautiful. This temple has actually been around for quite a while. Like refugees in World War II used to take shelter in this temple. But that aside, what are some Indian dishes that you like? I like me some uh, Prada. Prada? What about Gucci? Gucci's okay. Well, you're going to be eating way more than Prada today. Come along with us on this journey as we explore Little India. So we are now at Teka Market. Anywhere you go, right? Any neighbourhood or estate, you have to go and visit the Hawker Centre. Stephen, do you know what this is? I don't know what this is. If you could pick any name for this dish, what would you pick? I would say diced and sliced pieces of food. Close enough. This is actually called Indian Rojak. What really stands out from Indian Rojak is the sauce. It looks a little bit like satay sauce but it's not. It's slightly spicy but most of it is just sweet. I have never tried this ever. I see a prawn tail there. Everything is super crispy. Man, the prawn flavour in that little piece is so strong. Do you know what this is? Some sort of meat. It ain't meat, buddy. It's tempeh. Now that you've eaten it, what do you think tempeh is? There's not a meat or a fish, it's like a bean. It's a bunch of beans just pressed together. The favourite part of this roja is that you can like mix and match your meals. I think it'll make a really good like entree. Okay, so this one I've never tried before. Do you know what the dish is? Prada cooked in the shape of a plate. No, it's actually appam. It's made out of rice batter and coconut. So it's a very nice sweet dessert. Like first I taste the sugar and then the taste of the coconut hits. Now after all the sweetness, when the dough is left in your mouth, you can taste the uh, fermentedness. A little bit sour. So our next dish is a dish that's well loved. And it is prata. So this one comes with mutton curry and sambal, which isn't really something that you will see at a usual prata place. The prata, it's so silky and buttery, but it's still chewy at the same time. You just described a great prata. The sambal is actually pretty spicy. You can taste the ikan bilis. It's a bit sweet. Right now, we have a dish that you cannot eat with your hands. So this is prawn mi. It's not Indian food. That's the nice thing about hawker centres is that you have variety. And this is one of the more famous stalls here at Tikka Market as well. So it's the first time I'm trying this prawn mi. I didn't expect the prawn flavour to be so strong. The soup really is the highlight. The pork is chewy, yet very tender. And I prefer rice over noodle. But this one, I think I'll take this over a rice dish. I have some bad news. We have come to the end of our journey at Tikka Market. And you kind of got to hit a lot of like different dishes that you've never tried before. I think my favourite dish that I've tried at Tikka Market is easily this prawn mi dish. Wow. You can prawn mi anytime. Nobody laughed! We're here at Komala Villas and we have quite a spread in front of us. So actually, Komala Villas has been here for 70 years. So you know, they know what they're doing. Okay, so this is masala tose. It's the typical tose dough, but on the inside, it's stuffed with potato masala. So it comes with two different kinds of chutneys. You have coconut chutney and tomato chutney and sambar. So the flour is actually like fermented rice flour, which is why it's a little bit sour. I can really taste turmeric powder. Like the potato is really softly uh, cooked. Let's move on to the uh, next dish. Like at first glance, the idli looks like a flat piece of bread. This one is steamed, so it's like a steamed rice cake. I think eating it with the idli, the flavour of the dip really stands out. So the idli, right, on its own is very, very soft. It kind of flakes as well, so when you put it in your mouth, it like has a like melt in your mouth kind of feeling. Shall we move on? This is the vade. It's like the Indian donut. It's not sweet, it's savoury. And on the inside, you'll see like onions and then you have chilli. And the skin's so crunchy. Fun fact, Stephen, PM Lee has had vade at Pumala Villas before. I've been at the same place as PM Lee. 
Okay, so next we have naan with paneer butter masala. So this is like the vegetarian version of butter chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But instead of chicken, it's paneer cheese, which is like cottage cheese. The cheese has a texture of like a really well cooked chicken. It's very firm, and the sauce itself is super creamy. Has that nice butter sauce sweetness to it. So usually I'm like heavily a meat person. Experiencing this like vegetarian cuisine, I don't miss my meat. There's so many flavors and all the breads like fairly dense, so it fills you up. Yeah, I think like vegetarian food in essence is like a very vital part of Indian cuisine. So you guys have to try having a more traditional vegetarian meal, I guess. So now we're at the former house of Tan Teng Nia. And Stephen, do you know who Tan Teng Nia is? I do not know. He is actually a Chinese Taoke who used to own sweet making factories in Serangoon. This is actually his former home. And it's the last surviving Chinese villa in Little India. It's really cool, so I think I might take a second and take a photo. Let me take a selfie. <laughs> now that we've done with all my poses and we've got Lots of cool photos. Let's go to the next location. Wow, this place is really cool. It is really yeah. cool. Where are we? We are at Kebabs and Curries, which is located on a secret floor in Mustafa Center. No visit to Little India is complete without a trot to Mustafa. And we've got a feast. Maybe we should start with the cheese naan. The naan. Like the base of it, where they cooked it, it's like crispy. You get like a strong hit of the cheese flavor on top. You're gonna try some of the buttered chicken. It's creamy, it's a little bit sweet. A little bit of a chart taste of the chicken, which adds a nice flavor to it. I feel like they might have used like the tandoori chicken itself. I think that the chicken's a little too chewy for my liking, but this actual butter sauce is like really good. To the kebabs. To the kebabs. Very, very soft. Not even like mincemeat kind of soft. It's like kind of pasty. First bite is a little salty though. Are you ready to try the chicken tikka? I am. I love the hint of lime that was squeezed all over it. I feel like the chicken's too chewy. It is slightly more like stringy, but when you bite into it, it's still very soft. I think like one of my favorite things about this restaurant is the ambiance. If you want to have a nice romantic night out or you know dinner with the family, our fresco dining opens at 7 p.m. So on the way up here. I saw lots of things that looked interesting. I've never been here before, so let's go shopping. A few moments later. Which resort do beverages go to when they're ready to relax? Where? Patam. <laughs> what did one tea say to the other tea when it was feeling sad? What? Just chill with it. <laughs> hey, you don't know! <laughs> What did the female say to a slow man walking in front of him? What? Man, go! Okay, so now we're here at Mutu's Curry, which is located along Racecourse Road. Why is it called Racecourse Road? Why do you think it's called Racecourse Road? There was some sort of race going on. You are absolutely right. There used to be horse races that took place right there. But today, what you'll find at Race Course Road is Trichet Curry, which Mutu's curry is most famous for. We also have some side dishes. So we have fish kebabs, lamb rack with ananas, which is pineapple. Bon appetit. Let us eat. <laughs> While we sit, we oui, oui. The thing about fish head curry, right, compared to like chicken curry or you know, mutton curry, is that it has a very distinct tanginess to it. The fish is really super tender. It's like disintegrates in your mouth. The curry also has like pineapple and lady's finger. So I guess it adds a nice like sweetness or so. It's time for us to try the fancy lambrak. I think the meat is very well cooked because like, it's a little bit pink in the middle. Mm. You can um, tell it's been cooked over a fire. It's got the char and the smokiness to it. The chutney adds like a slight tanginess and makes a great tasting lamb rack. So our next dish, the fish kebabs. I like that it's all charred and the fish is like super tender, just falls apart. And it doesn't have the very like a super fishy taste, you know the kind that kind of turns you off? So like you look at it and it's all yellow so you think the turmeric and the spice is going to be really heavily flavoured. I think all the flavours are really subtle and it kind of still lets the fish meat shine through. 
No one could have put it together more beautifully. Oh, thank you. If you want to come down to Mutu's Curry for like a nice family dinner or like if you want to get together with your friends, this is a great place because the ambiance is like a nice restaurant. Like fish egg curry in general is a great sharing dish. So Azmi restaurant has been around for like around 60 years and their speciality is chapatis and every table kind of has this mutton kima. I really like the chapati, like soft and warm. The chapati itself is more of like a texture thing. I like that the mutton kima has like bits of pea and like other vegetables in it. It looks hearty. One more question. Uh -huh. I've asked Xenia and Nick and they both couldn't give me an answer. Okay. What's the story behind the Merlion? So then they don't know me. So Sang Nila Utama was kind of prancing around Singapore. He saw what he thought was a lion, but it was swimming. And so he was like, lions don't swim, it's probably half fish. That is 100% confirmed plus chop. The story of the Merlion. Looking around this place, it looks really traditional, like an old school look to it. And all the uncles that are making the chapati. They look freaking seasoned. Are you going to learn how to make chapati? No, but I know where to come for good chapati. And if you don't know, all you have to do is just ask me. Okay, so we've come to the end of our Little India adventure and right now we are at Little India Arcade. So to your left and right, you'll see a lot of shops selling clothes, flower gardens and everything. What was your favourite part of the day? Favourite part of the day was the colourful house of the Taoke. And what about your favourite food of the day? Favourite food of the day was that fish kebab. Overall, I think the culture of Little India is like amazing, all the history behind it. So thanks for showing me around. You're welcome. If you like this episode, <laughs> you can watch more over here. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe down below. Now we have something very important to do. Are you ready to go shopping? Yes, I am. Okay. Goodbye. Everyone. See ya.